Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to be running you guys through the software for the Logitech MX Keys S keyboard. Without further ado, let's jump straight into it. So when you install the Logi Options Plus software and connect the keyboard to your computer, this is going to be the screen you're greeted with. Everything here in the white border can be customized to do pretty much whatever you want. If I go ahead and click on a random button like this lock screen, I can have it either be lock or keyboard shortcut, which is recommended by Logitech or you can do other actions and you can see a list of all of the things you can do here. And you can see that there are quite a few presets that can be done that are related to your computer or your operating system. And then if you want a specific shortcut, you can do keyboard shortcut. So a cool one I like to do is control shift T. And what this does is it opens a tab that I closed in my browser. So here I am on the browser and let's say I close this tab. And then I'm like, oh wait, I need to go back to that tab. I could either open a new tab and navigate my way back to that page, or I can go ahead and click the new shortcut I just created. And you can see that my tab has opened up again. Of course, you can make this button do whatever you'd like. That's just personally how I like to use it. And one thing to take this a step further is right now we're in the global setting. So what if I say make this only work on Google Chrome? That way when I press this, it only works in the applications where it's actually a shortcut that can be used. The Logitech software is gonna be able to detect which app you have open, and when you press that button, it's gonna execute that shortcut, which is really gonna help your productivity by a long shot if you are a shortcut type of person. Now, the next thing to cover is the backlighting tab. So this is gonna be your keyboard backlight settings. So I can turn them off completely if I want to here, and my keyboard lights will be off. And if I wanna turn it back on, it's back on. Now lighting duration is how long the lights stay on when your hand is detected by the keyboard. So if I go ahead and set it to five seconds, and if I go ahead and hover my hand over the keyboard, you can see that the lights turned on. And if I remove my hand from the keyboard, and if we wait five seconds, the lights should turn off. And as you can see right there, the lights did indeed turn off. So that's gonna be a great feature to help preserve the battery life with the keyboard, which I highly recommend because when you're not using the keyboard, there's really no point in keeping the lights on. I personally like to have my lights turn off after five seconds because that's really gonna help amp the lighting up. If you want your lights to be on longer, then you can up it to like whatever time you want. And it goes all the way up to 30 minutes. Now the next feature here is automatic brightness, and this is gonna adjust the brightness level of your light lights based on the lighting around you. So if you're using the keyboard at night and there's no lights around you, the brightness is gonna be turned all the way up, which is gonna burn through the battery life a little faster. And vice versa, if you are in a daytime environment and there's a lot of lights, there's the sun, windows, it's gonna be on the dimmest setting or the lights could be off. I think this is a handy feature and I like to keep this feature on. And then battery saving mode is gonna automatically turn off the lights if your battery goes under 10%. And that's gonna be super handy so the keyboard doesn't randomly shut off on you while you're in the middle of working. Next, we have Easy Switch, which allows you to connect multiple computers and you can switch between them through the software. However, you could just flip through the settings by clicking either of these three buttons on the keyboard instead of going through the software. And next, we have the Settings tab, which there are gonna be some pretty useful settings here that you may need to know about. So the first one is the function keys. Do you wanna hold function plus F1, for example, to register that button, or do you just just want to press F1 without holding the function key. You can change that over here. Do you want the keyboard to be in Windows layout? So if you're a Windows user, check this. If you're on a Mac, then go ahead and uncheck this. And by unchecking this, the keyboard will switch to a Mac style keyboard. Scrolling down, we have disabled keys. Do you want to disable any of these keys? Go ahead and check it and those keys will be locked. Device backup lets you create an account with Logitech and then you can back up your settings and every time you switch between different computers, your settings will get updated. Restore to defaults, pretty straightforward. And then remove device, disconnects the keyboard from the software and the computer. And then at the bottom left here, we do have the battery level and it shows how the keyboard is connected and we have it on Bluetooth. So this keyboard can be configured in many different ways and it all depends on your productivity and how you like to work. If you're a video editor, definitely consider updating some of these shortcuts to help you increase that video editing workflow. If you're someone who deals a lot with spreadsheets, then maybe you can have things like create a new row shortcut. So the options are endless and it's up to you to get creative with the shortcuts. And with that being said, if you wanna see a dedicated review video with this keyboard, be sure to click the video up here. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.